Time and time again on this channel, we've been hyping up the Invincible, and now the wait is finally over. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and now we finally get to take our first look at this game based on the Stanislav Lem's iconic novel, a game that uh, is a little bit like Firewatch with its narrative story following the novel, yet also trying to give you many elements to explore dialogue between characters and, you know, collect items and whatnot in a more, uh, I guess, sci-fi thriller setting. Welcome aboard. Good to see you all here today. I'm going to be showing you just a little bit of this game, uh, an hour or so, but I do want to also do a full live stream on this one and see all of your reactions to the story and much more. It's been a great year for space games, and The Invincible is kind of one of the last ones to come out now, with, of course, news around the Squadron 42 and Star Citizen updates coming soon, and then, of course, the release of Starfield and earlier Star Wars, and then, of course, we also had Fort Solace, which was another narrative-driven story adventure game. Well, it's all pretty good stuff. I like it. Each and every different type of space game uh, including, uh, you know, like building ships in Starfield and building bases and exploring different locations. It's been a lot of fun. So welcome aboard. Good to see you all here. Thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. Lots of open world survival and crafting and base building games here. And uh, now we're going to take a look at something a little different. So welcome aboard. Thanks for smashing like. And let's take our first look at the Invincible. Let's go. The Dragonfly, a small research unit of the Interplanetary Commonwealth with a crew of six, travels the distant regions of space. After visiting many worlds and exploring numerous planets, the research mission comes to an end. However, on the way home, there's one more task waiting for the crew. Despite the risk, Astrogator Novik undertakes the extraction of a rare and extremely valuable mineral himself. Novik gets the mineral, but at the cost of a broken leg and immense pain. The Astrogator's accident doesn't stop the crew from happily celebrating the end of the uh, research cycle. It was a time of creating deep bonds and feeling unstoppable. Victorious, they set course for home and go for a well-deserved rest in the hibernation chambers. Anybody? Space is a Dr. Yatna. I need backup. Space, come in. I have a... I'm showing disturbing symptoms. A brain fog, severe pain in the frontal lobe. Confusion. At first glance, there are no serious injuries. And yet, I'm quite concerned. I don't even know how I got here. Oh, well, here is. Backup needed, I repeat. Do you hear me? for a moment. My receiver's dead, but the transmitter... it may still be working. Damn it, I've lost my beacon. Where is it? I have two solid hectobars in the tank. It's enough for several hours. Like I thought, nothing. I'm on my own. 
at least within a 50 meter radius. The beacon can't be detected either. There aren't many supplies, which would suggest a quick wrecking. And was that just the end of the mission? See if the past me hasn't failed the present me. And let's hope she took notes. Are we on Regis 3? Doesn't ring any bells. And my crew have no way to tell me. So I report that I have no recollection of this planet. The last thing I remember. Hang on. We've closed the research cycle. We, we were already in hibernation. Flying back. Is my blackout a side effect of metabolic depression? That would be bizarre. All right. So we're on a planet called Regis 3. We have to get back to our camp, it looks like, perhaps? Okay. For some reason, our crew split into two groups. The first one set up camp. I wonder if I was with them. Or am I on my way there? Both groups landed in the same place. We took two landers to the surface. They usually do this. Maybe the first one broke. A beetle? The first group explored the ocean with no biologist. It's weird. And the other one, just me, took a different route, leading to... Right! I was heading straight to the camp. Croco, Needle, Dog. You must be somewhere near. Give me a sign! Send up a flare, the probe! Anything! Okay. I'm gonna head to the camp, but I'll be keeping an eye out for you. Landmarks. Well done, past me. <laughs> you didn't disappoint after all. Oh. Oh, I sound like... I need to stop doing this. I'm looking for something that resembles a dog. I called Needle. Sounds like finding a needle in a haystack, but I think we found it. Right. It resembles the eye of a needle. Nice. I report that I have established my position. Time to hit the road. There's Croco as well. That must be the one that's directly across from us. Right there. Okay. Oh, I feel like I'm leaning to the side heavily. Oh, we're kind of running already. We need to find our way back to the camp. We've been lost for a while, and we somehow have collapsed. What is this? More dropped equipment. I must have hit the ground pretty hard. The metal detector. Oh. Dr. Gorski, you won't be pleased. More equipment to repair. Oh, it's the broken. is dead. I guess I shouldn't just leave it like this. 
broken or not. We might be able to use that for spare parts. I'm in a canyon, which doesn't make it easy to navigate. I hope the data's trustworthy and you're close by. Oh, I got something oh, on the radar. I have something on the tracker. I assume it's no one from the crew, so perhaps it's my beacon. All right. Hey, we found it. Got you. I found it. Look for me on your trackers. Water reservoir. Now, one of the things that I've uh, forgotten to mention at the intro of this game, too, is that it uh, really feels like a 1960s, 1970s sci-fi adventure based on, like, Soviet technology or really atomic punk. If you guys remember Atomic Heart, uh, this kind of has the same look of what uh, cosmonauts and sometimes, like, Western uh, space tech would okay. look like, too. Moving on. So the vehicles in this game... All the devices, the spacesuits, and everything looks so cool. The atomic punk or NASA punk style stuff is really neat, and I like it a lot. Wow, it's actually water? Huh. There's water on this desert planet. Hmm. Or another liquid that did not allow the biosynosis to form. Won't be easy to replenish drinking supplies. Not without tests. Filtration, as we all remember. Third rule. Have you checked on Yasna? I was about to. Already awake. Good. <gasps> yes, ma'am. Hmm? Yeah, I don't know if you're awake or whether it's a post-hibernation of praxia. No, I'm, I'm awake. I'm awake. Just slowly. Now, try to get up slowly. Dr. Gorski doesn't look so well. How are you holding up, Gorski? Don't get up just yet. Is it really so hard for you to remember a couple of simple rules? I have to stretch my legs. They're numb. Hibernation will do that. Just sit for a while. Here, take it and remember the third rule. Yes, I know. Stay hydrated. In small sips. Always the first one to get up. I don't know how you do it, Marek. It's a matter of habit. After so many cycles of cryogenic sleep, one either gets used to it or becomes a tortoise. Kovel, will you help me here? Sure, I'm coming. This is not our system. Has anyone noticed we're in the wrong place? Kovel, it's not a good time. Yasna, look for yourself. This is not the right planet. You shouldn't be walking yet. Kovel, could you stop it? I'm telling you, we woke up in the wrong place. Yes, we heard you. Enough of this, Yasna. Crew. Astrogator. The bathing chamber in 15 minutes. Uh, this can't be good. Guess we'll find out. But first, here, hold on to it and remember. Stay hydrated. Rule number three. Got it.
Well, she didn't fill it up. I guess it's because it could be possibly dangerous. Who truly knows? Oh, what is that? Huh. I think I see our ship. You're not leaving without me, are you? Well, I think I see a way up. We gotta go that way. So I guess through this cave? Alright. No time to lose. Death Stranding, very famous, very good walking simulator that's getting a sequel soon. Firewatch, wonderful walking simulator I wish they would make a sequel to. Many a game like this <sighs> that are quite good. Time to go. Time to go. Are you going to jump down there? I better, I better not do that. Well, I can't get through the cave. It's blocked. But there might be a path around up there. I found a way out of the valley, leading more or less towards the camp. But I can't go this way. Right. All right, well, let's swing around the valley. Ooh. Well, it's a long way down. Oh, the bottom's out of sight. Best not to overthink it. I think we found the right way. Oh, good. It's not a dead end. and extreme temperature changes may explain the extinction of local fauna and flora. But it's all just too idyllic. There's no dust in the air, and the sky is clear, and the soil looks like laterite to me. Perhaps not highly fertile, but not entirely barren. On some planets, such storms last for several hundred days. I hope it's not one of them. Volcanoes or impact craters. Both, maybe? Well, we can go down or we can go up, but I want to see the, the view. Wow.
Look at that. meters in a straight line I, I see you can you hear me I just need to get down from here I can't get down this way I could attach a rope though but uh for some reason, I don't have one with me. Oh well. If it catches me, so be it. This suit will hold. Oh, looks like there was a rope. There's a marker for a rope, but I'm not sure if it was there. I'm not sure if we could have actually reached that area. Looks like it was maybe up in the cliffs. In order to take the rope down, we'd probably have to climb to the top of it. Dig this way. Oh, this looks like the fun way. Here the ground slopes a little more gently, which doesn't mean it's completely flat. All right. I want to see you as soon as possible. I'll take a chance. Was less than ideal, but I'm okay. The suit's fine too. Wow. There's a pretty big storm kicking off. Visibility could be better. What happened? Where are... I was heading to... Impossible. I'm much closer to my destination. I must have walked for some time. But... I don't remember it. Did... Black out again. Having trouble staying conscious, that's kind of concerning. Be a little closer now, maybe 200 meters? Yeah, we're about halfway there now. Send Hopper closer to the camp. Find a place to land. I need to get back to Dragonfly as soon as possible. Go to the infirmary and do a full set of tests on myself.
Well, we could try to climb up to the right. Like a giant canyon there. Let's try this way. Gorgeous planet. Look at that. Wish we could take a picture. It'll last longer. Oh, can't walk up there. Okay. Um. Oh, maybe we are supposed to go to the canyon. Okay. There's just a little pathway here, okay. I remember you, Regis Third Satellite. Astrogator, sir, crew. Dr. Gorski, right on time. Any updates? We have a set of data from the near surface probe. How's the activity? Zero, zero, and two. So, less than nothing. Atmosphere? Nitrogen, 78%. Argon, 2%. Carbon dioxide, zero. Methane, 4%. The rest is oxygen. Uh, wait, that's 16%. With oxygen concentration as such, there should be life. At least some microbes. And yet we have detected no traces. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Let's finish with the probe readings first. Air radioactivity? It's virtually zero. In the words of paradise, no radioactivity, no endospores, no bacteria, no mold, no viruses, nothing. Just the oxygen. If there were no living organisms on the continent, there shouldn't be this much of it. What if life develops on some other continents here? No, I doubt it. Insulation outside the equatorial zone is weak. Do you not see how thick the polar ice caps were, Doctor? I can guarantee a minimum of five miles of ice sheet, potentially six. Mm, that's true. There's more chance of something in the ocean. Some seaweed, algae. But why didn't life migrate to the land? Could be because of hard radiation. Mm, I don't think so. According to the probe readings, the ground activity is exceptionally low for this part of the galaxy. I wonder if some special kind of drought intolerant evolution occurred here. And that would at least explain some of the abnormalities. Hmm. Anyway, we'll have to take a look under the water. First, it would be good to know what time frame we're working with. Marit, do you have the geological analyses? It's a bit too early for mature conclusions, but this planet looks old to me. Such a fossilized egg must be at least six billion years old. Besides, the sun has seen better days too. It's almost a red dwarf. Any rare resources, forms, creatures? We can't expect such detailed data, sir. Not from this distance. 
Yes, we would have to explore the surface. Astrogator, what exactly are we looking for? The value of this planet. For now, it may seem like the pinnacle of nonsense, but I assure you that Regis III is not without worth. With all due respect, Astrogator, I have the impression you're not telling us everything. As always, Dr. Koval, your instincts are correct. Please forgive my reticence. My goal was to maintain unimpeded research neutrality. There is indeed a very important factor of interest in this planet. The Alliance. The Alliance? Oh, the Alliance? Correct. What do they have to do with it? Well, they've sent their most powerful unit here. But to our best knowledge, Condor's traversing a distant quadrant. Oh. I'm not talking about the Condor. So, the Invincible? Good guess, Doctor. A steel behemoth with the power to produce billions of kilowatts in a split second, converting it into energy fields that no material body can penetrate, concentrating it into destructive rays as hot as stars that can reduce a mountain range to dust or evaporate an ocean, together with its crew of almost a hundred men, professionals that are neither better nor worse than us. Well, I dare to say we're better trained, Astrogator. Uh, they are, however, unquestionable masters of propaganda. I know that some accomplishments they brag about are very much far-fetched, but the capabilities of the Invincible are not subject to doubt. And we as the scientific body should sever ourselves from the emotional and symbolic facade. In other words, we cannot ignore facts just because we don't like them, Mr. Coble. All right, but where do we stand in all this, together with our, may I say, not quite as numerous staff? Despite our modest forces, we still have a chance to gain a critical advantage over the Alliance while avoiding confrontation. Okay, uh, and how would we do that? Simple. We leave this planet before the Invincible arrives here. Which is when, exactly? Well, they're still far away. <sighs> Astrogator, please, how much time do we have to conduct safe research? Thirteen days. There's no time to lose, then. I appreciate your eagerness, Coble. Dr. Crowther, do we need full gear? Mm hmm Definitely. Also, I caution you against taking off your helmets for a prolonged duration. This amount of methane is not neutral. Breathing the local atmosphere will lead to saturation drop. And you may start showing symptoms of mild brain damage, feel stupefied. But uh, don't worry, not before an hour or even a couple of hours. I see. Dr. Gorski, will you program Artie to collect samples? Of course. Marit? Crowther, please prepare for the surface. Koval, you too. You're leaving early in the morning. And what about me? You're staying on board, Doctor. But Astrogator... Uh, this is not up for debate. I need you here. As you well know, there's not much work to do for a biologist on Regis Three, if any. Well, if I was ordered to stay, what the hell am I doing here? Wait a minute. Oh, thank goodness. Not everyone's in the field. I remember this from before. This is one uh, of the demo areas that we played before for the Invincible. Let's see if anything's changed. Otherwise, this is a very important and very cool part. This is Dr. Yasna reporting. Do you copy? I'm entering the campgrounds. Is anyone out there? Oh, it's just an Androbot. Androbot. Stop. Androbot, stop. What the? I'm reporting a robot malfunction. No response to voice commands. Cause unknown. Oh, 
Uh, maybe if I... RT, default position. I don't know what's wrong with you, buddy, but you clearly don't want to cooperate. Krauter, didn't you hear me earlier? Uh, doctor, is everything all right? Uh, doctor, please, look at me. I report that I've located Dr. Krauter. He's in bad shape. I'm going to examine him now. Temperature normal. Pulse too. O2 saturation is fine. There's nothing physically wrong with the doctor. His pupils respond properly. Look at my finger. No delay in reactions. Astrogator. Finally. I've been listening to you for two hours now. My receiver is dead. No need to explain yourself, Doctor. I know everything. The transmitter was still working, so I heard your reports. You didn't have it easy. Wait, please. I need to reconnect. <laughs> Testing. One, two, three. Ah, copy you, Doctor. Loud and clear. Do I understand correctly that the doctor's life is not in imminent danger? That's my initial diagnosis, yes. Yet no response to verbal communication? None. Conclusions, doctor? Do you have any idea what's wrong with him? Akinesia, mutism, impoverishment of mimic movements, and reaction to stimuli. These are all symptoms of stupor. But it's difficult to pinpoint the cause of the disorder. We need to quickly perform a complete set of tests and focal plate tomography of his brain. Otherwise, I won't be able to say anything more. I'll prepare the infirmary. But first things first, Lambda. We need to get you all on board. Everyone, not just Dr. Krauter. Okay, what should I do? Please look for the mission log. Should include crucial data about the cruise activities. We have three more people to find, and you still need to designate a place for the landing. Hello? A anyone else here? I found Dr. Crowter. We go. It's not a mission log, but it will do. Dr. Krauter kept records. Meticulous as always. What's in there? Initial analysis of the samples revealed nickel, iron, manganese, beryllium, of course, bears, and titanium in the composition. I'd give a lot to understand what it actually is. Quick theory, a giant nickel iron meteor splashed into the atmosphere of Regis 3, melting its surface millions of years ago. No, wait, scratch that. The shape of the structures contradicts that. Hmm. 
Dr. Gorski has moved away from the research sector to the west. Ah, that's right. We followed those deposits of metal. Metal? That's why we have detectors. Correct. Mine died, but Crowter had one as well, didn't he? Like everyone in the crew, Doctor. The most important thing is probably the landing coordinates. BA-2316. Loading. 360. Excellent. I'm uploading the data. Starting calibration. Yeah, just a sec. Bingo. Got it. Please make sure it works. Oh, I don't understand why it wouldn't. It's a rather reliable piece of equipment. Like everything around, it's already broke. Okay. Checked. I'm leaving the tent. It's unresponsive. Yes, I know. I'm currently trying to establish a connection. Can I help somehow? You must look for the others, Doctor. I'll take care of this myself. Get the tin head back on its feet remotely. And secure Crowter. I have everything I need. Just... Is something wrong with the connection, sir? It's not working. I'm not sure why. There's a relay transmitter in the camp, so the signal should be strong enough. A relay? Hmm. Huh. Yasna, what are you up to? One sec. I'm looking for it. <sighs> what about the rest of the crew? You're gonna make them wait? If the Androbot isn't working properly, I can't just leave Krauter like this. He might hurt himself. Uh, fine. Proceed as you deem fit. I've got bad news. Our signal is far too weak to restart that Androbot. The relay malfunction? Not exactly. It's completely fried. I don't think a sandstorm could cause such damage. Well, that's irrelevant now, Doctor. There must be a spare somewhere in the camp. Please search for it. <sighs> no luck. Oh, they're not in here. the extra relay. Excellent. The signal should be back as soon as it's turned on. <laughs> That's cool. Very good. I'm connected. Uh, what happened here? Uh, this is unlike anything I've ever seen. As if... I don't know. Is it going to work? We'll see. I rebooted the systems. That should help. Good, good. It's receiving instructions. Oof. I don't know if the Androbot should already be doing something. Is it still frozen? Yes, unfortunately. Hmm. A positronic brain has correct readings. Receptors. Hmm. should be walking now. Does he? His positional data hasn't changed. 
Well, he's trying to. <laughs> well, you can see that he really wants to go, but still can't. Uh, please check his legs. Hmm. Could be the server motor. Parking brake. Ah, that's it. Got you, you tin bastard. Uh, thank you, Doctor. I won't hold you any longer. Go find the others while I finish here. That's an order. Yes, sir. Well, all right. Oh, I see. We can mark where we are and then skip that. Oh, that's cool. An excavation site and a landing site. All right, let's go to excavation. Goodbye, Artie. Such a nice guy. Doesn't say much, but he gets the job done. Those dots must be the doctor and the robot. Yes, now focus. What now? Go to the excavation site. Let's go this way. Entering the research area. Clear for now. Tracker? Silent. By the way, what did they find here? Oh, right. You don't remember. A piece of metal sticking out of the ground. Sounds inconspicuous, but in this desert environment, it's a phenomenon. The artifact turned out to be too big to dig up or to subject to chemical and spectrometric analysis. Dr. Gorski set out to investigate its source to find some end. And? Did he? That I don't know, unfortunately. It's here. I can see the structure. I'm in the right place. Understood. Please continue. I don't want to get close to that thing. Wow. They did a great job designing this. We got something on the signal. Signal tracker. Got someone. Yep. I'm following the signal. Detecting something. Huh. There's something on the ground. Geological cross section measurements. Here's a merit's notes. Oh, she must be somewhere close. Please search the entire area thoroughly. We must focus on both water chemistry testing and geological drilling. Oh, they were tracking what the hell this thing was. It looks like maybe, perhaps, at one time there was sea life on this planet. And wherever we are now used to be possibly deep underwater. Or something water-like. Layers of sedimentary clay interspersed with blackish-red substance. Not geological, not planetary. Millions of years old, at least. 
the FRG structure. I call the BAS. Uh, Cosmosol... Solidarity Alliance Interplanetary Commonwealth Headquarters Space Division Solar System. Dear Dr. Merritt, this is in response to the latest interplanetary conference. We'd like to offer you a promotion in the future expedition of Obelisk 03 as an astrogator. Your skills and overall performance in previous missions provided to us your readiness to take the next step in the space journey. We would uh, be delighted to receive your response as soon as you're back from your current mission. Clearly, uh, General per Perksard, Commanding Officer, Space Division. I think I know where I can find her. Gotta go up. Oh. Yeah, probably good not to get close to that. Or that. Looks like they were maybe drilling down here. They mentioned that. There could be a way up here. I should move. Oh, there's no time. Signals coming from a cast of backpack. That's concerning. I'm close, but I can't see her. She's here. I found her. What's her condition? Marit. 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 Wake up. Wake up. Do you hear me? Dr. Merritt? No. No Space vital here. functions. What's I going need on? two. One. Two. Three. Come on. One. Two. Don't do this to me, Merritt. Don't. Please. Please give me a minute. Of course. Everything will be fine. All fine. Was next. Yes, I think so. You should be close. <sighs> F in the comment section. Do you think? Call them. Let's not assume the worst. You'll find it, Doctor. Alive. 
You sure about that? Someone's here. All right, he's probably about 40 meters this way. This thing works to about 50, from what I recall. All right, let's head up the hill. Although there's certainly more information where that weird artifact was, but I don't know if I want to go near that thing. Is it making everybody crazy? Well, that woman didn't appear to be injured. Nor had she taken her spacesuit off or anything. Oh no. Oh no. Yasna, status. Yasna! He's. He's. He's also. not moving. This doesn't mean anything yet. Koval? Don't do this to me. Not. Oh. You're alive! Did you hear that, sir? Cobble's alive. I didn't doubt it for a second, Doctor. What's his current state? Checking. Parameters normal, yet he's completely unresponsive. Cobble? Cobble? His eyes are... So empty. Just like Crouter's. Koval, what the hell is wrong with you? Are all the symptoms the same as Dr. Crouter's? He's calm. Calmer. Well, at least he's alive. Now listen to me, Asna. The lander is on its way, but before you get Dr. Koval on board, I want you to do something. Yasna. I'm listening. Please look around for his journal. It's everywhere. In pieces. Nah, not good. Koval was in radio contact with Dr. Gorski. Taking notes. That's exactly why it's so important. These notes may help us find our man. I'll go over them. But it may take a while. Huh. Have you found it? No, it's, uh, nothing about Dr. Gorski. Ah, found them. Surprisingly accurate. He wrote down Gorski's every step. Great. Let's get Koval to the evacuation area. Can you carry him, Doctor? <laughs> Won't be pretty hard in 1G. But the gravity here should make things a tad easier. Hmm. There was a note, too, from him saying that there was life on the planet, and that we'd be happy. Uh, the structures uh, branch underground. Massive vertical exhibit protrudes above the surface. Water tank underground. Oh, there, oh that explains why there's water here. Uh, biggest one inside hill. Something other flagged. Visible from point azimuth 350. Merit. 
No cobble. An unprecedented degradation of equipment, recurring connectivity issues. It all has to be related somehow. On the other hand, how could it be? There's not much on this planet. Primitive life forms in the ocean, metal deposits in the ground. Although the latter got Dr. Gorski's interest for some reason. It's crazy how everything's falling apart here. I don't know. Maybe we're dealing with some kind of anomaly. An atmospheric or magnetic phenomenon. Yeah. Wouldn't something like that show on the charts? All those measurements Gorski took? I remember. Maybe he made a mistake. See you up there. Only Gorski's left. He might have made it quite far. Agreed. Everything points to it. I don't know how long I'll be looking for him. It might take hours before I come back. We also don't know Gorski's condition, nor what he's going through. I know time's running out. Still, I should go back for Marit. We need to find out what killed her. How did she die? For everyone's sake. Hmm. I hadn't considered that. You want to carry her to the Lambda? Yes. I need to understand. Alright, we gotta go back and get the other body then. Kinda cool how the robot was able to carry the other doctor over here. There is weird, man. It's like a toxic green mist. Probably from all those looks to be geothermal vents, but <laughs> that ain't uh, water. Something else. There's that structure. I'm still here, if you're wondering, sir. It all just takes longer than expected. I know the situation. No need to explain yourself, Doctor. We're in this together. Not leaving a man behind, damn it. Yes, sir. Come in. How are you feeling? How do you think, sir? I'm managing. Somehow. Forgive me, but I need to know if you're ready to continue your mission. <laughs> ready? Well, I don't think we have much choice in the matter. There's only one way forward. served with Dr. Merritt for over two decades. She was made of sterner stuff. The sternest. Many of us relied on her. I did. Did you know that headquarters offered her a promotion? She would have been the first female astrogator in the history of the Commonwealth. I had no idea. Doesn't matter anymore, really. Not entirely. Merritt will be awarded posthumously. Mm. 
seems so trivial to me now. The badge, the fancy title, as an emblem of human life and values. I thought it would bring you some comfort. Maybe that's a consolation for you, sir, but not for me. Please take good care of her. Of course. Dr. Gorsk is next. Let's hope he got out of danger in time. It would be good to know what kind of danger we're talking about. Hmm. All right. Now we got to find the next guy. Probably that away. Yep. All right. Let's head out. And that is all the time we have today for our first look at the Invincible. Certainly building the story already with the uh, what possibly could be a crash and then uh, the finding of uh, two not necessarily all there doctors and another one that's dead. Well, we have a lot more to discover in this game. So if you want to see a full series, a full playthrough, make sure you spam that like button like crazy. Let me know down below in the comment section and subscribe now and uh, we'll probably end up doing a full live stream of this too since it seems like a lot of fun to do alternative options and hear more dialogue great voice acting wonderful art style and a very great presentation from the same folks who are publishing uh well frostpunk and frostpunk 2 as well as many other great games so i'm happy to see this one being made by them as well all right everybody i'll see you all next time thank you very much for watching <laughs>